So the interesting thing about being a guitarist and then building your own guitars is that you're wearing these two hats. You're, building, you're wearing the builder hat and the guitarist hat. Um, and I think this is the first guitar that I've built out of the five or so um, that I feel that my guitarist hat uh, is excited about. Um, because my, my building is getting to the level where I'm, I'm really excited about playing it. So, Hi, I'm Trevor Stroud and um, my channel is called TJS Customs. About five years ago, I um, decided to start uh, looking into building my own guitars. And it was actually Ben's channel, Crimson Guitars, that inspired me to give it a go for the first time. This is a video where I recorded um, building my Great Guitar Build Off 2021 entry, which is my own version of a Gretsch White Falcon. Um, so this is the first guitar where I've built the, the whole thing from, from top to bottom, the neck and everything. So it was a, it was a big challenge. And I thought, well, <coughs> seeing as uh, it's a competition, we've got to go big or go home. So I chose the most iconic guitar that, that you do, that you can find, and that is the Gretsch White Falcon. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to build an exact replica. Not with my lack of experience and the lack of equipment and tools or things. So I thought, well, I'll make it my own. Um, so as you can see, the guitar is, is not exactly the same as the White Falcon. It's got my own style to it. And the reason I, I love the, the White Falcon and Gretsch guitars is they used a lot in worship music. And that's where I, I play mostly, is in the church. And mostly it's because of these beautiful uh, Fultitron pickups. They've got such a lovely, chimey tone to them. It's a challenge that would inspire me because I knew that it's going to be a long, long road, more, more than two months building this guitar. So I needed something to really keep myself motivated. Gretsch's are actually iconic guitars in their own right. And they've always interested me. And I love the style of it as well. I think the, um, the F holes and the, the hollow body nature of the guitar is, um, is really something that I, I've, I've always been drawn to. I suppose being an acoustic guitarist, I've been drawn to instruments that, that have an acoustic voice to them. So, so when I built this guitar, I actually made it full hollow. So it doesn't have any, have a center block. It's, it's got bracing on the inside. So it does have an acoustic tone as well. When I started with the design process of, uh, of um, thinking about how this guitar is going to go together and how I was going to build it, um, I decided that it needed to be able to play like an acoustic guitar because I'm an acoustic guitarist and that's what feels more, most comfortable to me. It's difficult to define what that, what that feels like and I think some of the elements is that it must be, have a very rigid neck and a neck to body um, joint. So, so when you're playing the guitar it must feel like a really rigid instrument. I think that's, and probably because the neck joins the body much closer, much higher up, so, so the neck is actually shorter. Um, so that gives it a nice um, stability to it. I decided to, to also make it thinner than the, um, than the White Falcon, um, just to make it more comfortable to play. But I also wanted to keep the strings as low as possible to, to the, the top of the, the guitar to, to feel more acoustic-like, because um, the Gretsch's actually have a very high bridge, and that can feel a bit strange when, when I'm playing it. So it's, it's all about trying to get it as comfortable for me as possible. The other thing I decided was that I didn't really want to, to bend the sides like a traditional acoustic or, or a Gretsch because uh, that, that's a whole complicated process that I had to go and figure out. Um, so I decided to avoid that and make solid sides. So the sides are all 15 millimeters thick all the way around except um, the tail block and obviously around the neck where it's a solid block over there. If you look at my, some of the other build videos that I've posted, you'll see um, how much material there is on the inside. And I think that I've achieved my goal of making it a really stiff, really rigid instrument. I chose maple for the front and the back. And going with the mahogany sides also gives it this two-tone look, which I really like. Um, a lot of the, the new Gretches that are, are coming out have, have this two-tone finish. Um, so I thought that would actually be quite nice. Um, I've got binding on it, it's the first time I've done binding um, and that was a real challenge um, with my limited tools, my limited uh, router bits but I managed to get a single layer of, of white binding with a, a white, uh, with a black line also around it uh, just to finish it off, I think that it worked out reasonably well. Making the, the arch top was quite a challenge. Um, this is a solid piece of wood on the front and the back um, started out with a 15 millimeter thick piece of wood that was glued together and then I came up with a, a process of making a router jig 
that can create a, an arc or a dish. And, and that was making an arc and then making a rotating base. So that I put the wood on the base, I rotated it, and then moved the router along to create this arc shape. Then I had to go and manually carve away um, and on the waist just to, to keep the thickness consistent all the way around because the waist is closer to the middle. Um, so I've got a basic arch shape which is relatively consistent on, on both sides. I don't know if you can see that in, in the video. Um, and it worked out really well because I was concerned that I wasn't going to get a, a, a really um, consistent radius. Um, but this, this procedure worked out really well. So then on the inside, um, once I'd got the shape um, the way that I wanted it on the outside, then I took my drill press and uh, set the, the gap of the, of the drill bit to the base to, to about six millimeters um, and then drilled holes from the back. So leaving six millimeters of material and then I was able to take a, an angle grinder and go and grind away all the material I didn't want on the inside by hand. So that, that was quite a messy process. Um, dust everywhere and it's quite an aggressive uh, process to use as well because it, it really takes away a lot of material um, at once so you have to be very careful when you do that. But yeah, I managed to get through that, um, glued everything together, uh, we'll cut out the F-holes first of all. Um, as you can see it's got the White Falcon um, F-holes which are much bigger than your some of the other models um, which also Makes it, uh, makes it easier to put all your electronics in as well. That's another byproduct of having bigger F-holes because you've got to get through these holes and through the pickup cavities to get all the electrical wiring on the inside. As you can see, I'd, I've, I've made my own tailpiece, uh, made my own scratch plate out of walnut. Uh, it's the same wood that I used on, on the fretboard and on the scratch plate and on the tailpiece. And also the bridge base I made myself as well so that I could, which is custom, custom made to lower the, um, the tunematic bridge because I needed that as low as I could get it with the neck angle that I'd, I'd built into it. Um, and if you look at the, at the back, you can also see that I've, I've built it with a five piece laminate neck, um, which is maple in the center and the sides, and then it's got a rosewood um, on either side of you. And I think that, that really gives a nice look. And, by all accounts, that, that's just the most rigid way to make a neck. Uh, it's the stiffest way. So, as I said earlier, my, my goal was to make it as rigid as possible, to make it as stiff as possible. Um, my truss rod is two-way adjustable. So that's just the standard truss rod. You can see the truss rod cover, which also matches all the other walnut. Um, and this is a maple veneer that I put on the top of the headstock, uh, laminated in my logo. TJ's customs over there. Managed to get a nice volute in, in my neck as well. I'm really proud of that. Looks quite nice. Um, actually, carving the neck was actually one of the nicest um, processes. Because um, if you build a guitar, you'll find, especially if you're building a neck, you're spending so much time doing things uh, that don't seem, seem like they're actually getting to, um, to achieve anything. There's not a lot of progress. You're building all these jigs and things, but then you get to, to carve the neck and then you see it come to life and it's, it's very rewarding. I was worried that I was, whether I'd be able to get a nice profile, but it ended up working out really well. I had a template that I used to just get the, the profile correct at the first fret and in this case the 10th fret. Normally you'd use the 12th, but I had to use the 10th because of the, um, the curve going up to the, the neck joint. As far as the, the fretboard goes, yeah, that was quite a challenge. Uh, I had to build a, a router jig um, to, to create the, the fretboard radius, which is 12 inches. The, the fretwork is, is one of the things that I was most worried about um, uh, because it really has to be done right and, and um, your frets have to be leveled nicely for it to really play well because you can do everything else on the guitar and uh, if it doesn't feel good and play good then it's it's not going to be a guitar you want to play when i started building guitars i realized that there's really three elements that you have to focus on you have to focus on the looks of the guitar um, to get something that is um, aesthetically pleasing 
Then you have to look, focus on how it plays, the feel of it, and then the third thing is the, is the sound and the tone. And I think if you can get all three of those elements right, then you can have a guitar that, that, that will really inspire the musician. And I have plugged it in and played it, and I must say I'm really excited about the tone. The feel, uh, I can still do a little bit of setup work, but it's, it's feeling really nice, it feels rigid. It feels like an acoustic guitar to play, uh, which was really what was, I was going for. Uh, feels really comfortable. Well, you can judge for yourself what the looks are like, but I, I really like the, um, the custom look of, of the walnut. The finish that I chose for the guitar um, was to, to leave it uh, natural maple, but then use a, a spirit stain, uh, a white spirit stain, to, to just give it a little bit of a lighter color. Um, and my finishing um, material was, I used a Danish oil. Um, and I must have put in probably 15 coats already. Um, so as you know, it goes on really slowly and you've got to wipe it all off again and put it on two to three coats a day. Um, so, so in conclusion, um, I'm really excited to be part of this competition. Um, great Guitar Bulldorf 2021. And I just want to thank Ben and his channel for inspiring me to do this, because this, this is way better than I ever imagined it would be. I'm um, really excited about the way that it turned out um, and I'm wishing all the, the other guitarists and other builders the best for their instruments. I hope the judges are, are impressed with my entry and who knows, maybe I get a prize in the competition. But even if, if not, um, I'm excited about the opportunity and really glad that I got this chance to, to build my dream instrument.